task focuses on a discount of 25% and how that might work out when that discount, that 25% is being applied over numerous weeks. So the first question asks you, hey, if there's a 25% discount offered each week or added to each week after four weeks, is it gonna be free for that item? And the answer is no, because while the same discount might be being applied, it's not on that original amount each time. If the first item was say $10 and you got a 25% discount on it uh, for one week, that means it goes down to being $7.50. Now the next week that that discount is applied, it's 25% of $7.50, not of the 10. So it, it isn't a full $2.50 discount. It ends up being $5.62 instead of $5. So the reason it's not is because it's being applied to the new balance each week rather than reverting back to that original amount. So then if we look at number two, it says on a sale, all prices are reduced 25% and Julie sees a jacket that costs $32 before the sale. How much does it cost in the sale? So we have two different ways to do this. We can start by saying, oh, well, the jacket costs $32 and you get a 25% discount. We always convert percentages to their decimal equivalent. So when I go $32 times, or 32 times 0.25, that takes it down to an answer of eight. But that eight is what the discount amount is. So we have to then go to the 32, take the eight off to show the 25% reduction and then we get our sale price of $24. There's an easier way to do that because this is set up and focusing on the discount amount but the question is asking well how much do they pay? We want to take 32 and multiply it by the percent she does pay because if she doesn't pay 25% it means she is paying 75. So then we calculate this, this gives us the sale amount, the amount remaining that she does have to pay. And when you put that into your calculator, you'll see you get a 24. So by using the percent you do pay, it's a one step process to get to your answer rather than using the discounted price and then subtracting that amount to get the answer, which is a two step process. So question number three is very closely related to question number one, that there's a discount and after four weeks, Julie is gonna assume, oh, this 25% discount, I can get this item I want for free. No, that doesn't work. Um, and so we can prove it of the why. One, we can just do it in terms of explanation. The 25% discount is on the price remaining each week. It's not a full 25% off the original amount each time. So there's still gonna be a balance left over after four weeks. We can also prove it by plugging in some numbers. So let's make it easier on ourselves by just saying, Julie wants to buy something that originally costs $100. And after the 25% discount, it means she would be paying 75% of that original price, which means $75. Then the second week, 75 times 0.75 is gonna get us, I believe it's like 56, 62 or something like that. Let me get my calculator back out and... Oh, 56.25, and then 56.25 times 0.75, times 0.75, it's going to give us $42, and we'll round up to say 19 cents. So then $42.19 at 0.75, when we had another weeks of discount applied, 0.75, gives us $31.64. So you can show the mathematical map out of this to say, see, after four weeks, she didn't have a zero discount, but she did have a pretty substantial amount. Now we can't say she bought something for $100, but we could say, for example, if she bought something that was $100, after four weeks of discounts, she would still pay $31.64 for that item. So question four asks, well, if Julie wanted to buy that jacket that was originally $32, how much would she pay after four weeks worth of reductions? So 32 times 0.75 gives us a 24. Then we find 75% of that, which is 18. 
75% of that, which is 13 and a half, and 75% of that, which is $10.13. So in the end, she's still going to owe $10.13 on that jacket. The last question asks, what percentage of the original price does she save? So this is the amount she still pays. We don't want to use this, but we want to find the difference of what she didn't pay and turn that into a fraction so that we can create a percentage value for it. So if I take 32 and I subtract $10.13, it means that she saved $21.87 out of 32. We can find out what this is as a decimal by taking our part and dividing it by the whole. I'll just try to divide, and multiply, divide, like that. Yeah. So 21.87 divided by 32 gives us 0.68343. So we can stop here. And now I need to convert this to a percentage. So I just go over two places. And it gives me 68 as a whole, and I'll go ahead and just give it a tenth of a percent. So she saved 68 and three tenths of a percent on, on her jacket. Pretty good deal.